So as more and more cars on the road start to go into that EV space and switching from those internal combustion engines into an electric vehicle, and all these bigger brands are now adopting that same technology, these cars are becoming literally computers on wheels. You've heard that analogy of a Tesla being an iPhone on wheels, but now we do have some confirmation that Apple is again working on a car that they will be producing in entirety from beginning to end. And this is everything that we know from release date, design, and what to expect from it from a price standpoint as well. So let me know in the comments down below, if Apple released a car, is it something that you would consider? What price would it have to be at? Those are all questions that I want you guys to mention in the comments down below as we talk about it. But without further ado, let's talk about what Apple's cooking up when it comes to the automotive space. Let's get into it. So Apple has been rumored to be working on some sort of car, either software, hardware, or everything in between since around 2014. And then in 2017, there were rumors that they actually scrapped it entirely, especially from an actual physical car standpoint, and then said that they're switching to just working on the software. And now Apple CarPlay has been one of the biggest selling points to cars every single year, year over year. And I'm sure Apple on the back end, with more and more cars adopting CarPlay and being CarPlay enabled, they've been collecting their own driver data, right? As much as Apple wants to say they're not collecting all the user data, I'm sure passively and without actually digging into your privacy, they're collecting some useful data that they can use moving forward to improve their software, just like any other company does. And then as CarPlay got even more features, it got easier to use, it got extremely user-friendly, and it became kind of a staple in cars, especially for iPhone users, right? It was either you have CarPlay or Android Auto because, because infotainment systems in cars, they just, they're, they're not on the same level as let's say a software company like Apple or Google, which is known to make great user experience devices, especially when it comes to a touch-first interface. So back in 2020, Apple announced that they're pivoting back into creating an electric car from beginning to end, both on the software, hardware, manufacturing, so like they will build that car from beginning to end. And the one extra step that Apple took is that they're completely revamping CarPlay. They announced it earlier this year in 2022 that they're gonna completely change the UI of CarPlay to not only take over your center console, but then also take over your dashboard, especially if you have a virtual and digital dash which again, will just get people more into the Apple ecosystem and think maybe if you have a car that's using CarPlay that is that immersive and you're using it, let's say from a BMW or Mercedes, then you start to think to yourself like, oh wow, if Apple made their own car, it's probably even better than this experience itself. So now let's talk about some of the things that we actually know about Apple's new foray into the automotive space. So first off, obviously it's going to be powered by Apple Silicon. And when rumors started to kind of disperse about Apple's new, you know, Apple car for lack of a better term, it is called Project Titan. So if you guys do want to look it up, look up Project Titan on Google to get some more information on the Apple car after this video. But originally it was supposed to have this very futuristic limousine design. So it's pretty much four captain seats facing each other. So it's almost like you're in a nice little capsule that's just driving you from place to place. That's a little bit too ambitious. You know, we're not at that point yet. Apple is expected to have a more standard internal design with an actual steering wheel, with regular seating, but it's still going to have a lot of those futuristic car features. But one thing that we do know is that it's not gonna have full self-driving at launch. It'll probably be released as time goes on and it definitely will have adaptive cruise control and smart steering, especially on the highway. It will not have the full self-driving at launch, which people would wanna have and people probably expect from a tech company like Apple. There are some rumors that Apple is still going to be a competitor in the space when it comes to entertainment in the car and the self-driving, especially on the highway, is gonna be so good that people will still be able to go into the infotainment system and maybe watch movies while the car is driving and it'll alert you with enough time to say, hey, you gotta get off in about half a mile, let's turn off the infotainment system, turn off the screen, and make sure that you're aware that you gotta get off the highway here. Enough of a warning if you do have to take over the steering wheel and act quickly if something else is happening to you on the road. Another positive to look at, so let's talk about pricing, availability, and timeline of this Apple car. So Apple is expected to have the Apple car around 2026, and you guys know how this actually happens when car makers and manufacturers, especially companies like Tesla, but even now the more legacy brands like GM and Ford, when they announce their car, it takes them a little bit longer than anticipated to get that car out to the market. So even though Apple's pretty good about their launch dates and things like that, I'm still not gonna hold my breath for a 2026 launch date, but that is what we're expecting as of right now. And then also, it was rumored to be a car to start at 120,000 and above from a price point, which is gonna price a lot of people out of this Apple car. But now the rumors are stating that Apple will be launching a car that is sub $100,000 to begin with, which again, it's not cheap, but it's also not in that six-figure price point that's gonna price even more people out. 
So now let's talk about what's going to be powering this Apple car. So obviously Apple's going to be creating their own silicon, right? They do it for their iPhones, they do it for their iPads, they do it for their MacBooks and their Mac products. So this is going to be no different. And the rumor is that Apple will be putting basically four of their highest power chips in there as one chip to power the entire thing from a CPU and GPU standpoint. So again, we are going to be in 2026. So at this point, it'll probably be the M2 or M3. But imagine like four M2 Ultra chips kind of combined into one to power this actual vehicle because it should be ready for full autonomous driving. It should be able to power everything. The UI should be as good, if not better than what you get already with iPhones, iPads, and Macs. So overall, I do believe that Apple will be putting enough processing power to make sure we have a great experience from a computer standpoint. And the processor's codename is called codename Denali, which is the highest peak in North America, classic Apple. But that is what we're dealing with when it comes to what Mac chips will be inside of the Apple car. Let's quickly go over what we know about the design. Like I mentioned earlier, the first initial ambitious design was to pretty much just have like an oval capsule with four or five people kind of facing each other inside the car itself. But now we're gonna have a much more standard vehicle because Apple is trying to get this car out by 2026. So right now there is no real design from Apple, but in 2024, we should see them dial in on the design kind of start to get an idea of what it's going to look like at about 80 to 90 percent with little things happening along the way 2025 will be some rigorous testing of both safety ui enhancements making sure it's user friendly the user experience all the testing that goes into actually creating a car which again is probably a feat in its own right and then lastly in 2026 we should get some sort of launch in early vehicle releases from Apple. One thing to note is that Apple is looking for a partner in the manufacturing space. So they're not looking to develop their own beginning to end manufacturing, right? They're looking to purchase an already existing electric vehicle platform and they're kind of building off of that, which I think is a good idea, especially if they want to expedite this. And then eventually maybe as time goes on, then they kind of take over the entire process, similar to what they did for moving to Intel over to their M series chips. So that's everything that we know about the Apple car. Right now, from a what it looks like standpoint, we really don't know what Apple's gonna go with. Are they gonna go with kind of like a futuristic, boldly design? Are they gonna be more of a sports car? You know, how fast is it gonna be? What kind of range are we gonna get? These are all questions that will probably be answered as time goes on, but we do know that Apple is working on a car. They will be releasing something ideally within 2026, hopefully sooner than that, and it probably will work extremely well inside of the walled garden that we know as, as the Apple garden. So who knows, maybe I can envision a future where all you do is you put your iPhone 18 in the dash, it starts wirelessly charging, it connects via MagSafe, and then that powers the entire car, and it works with supplemental chips inside of the car to really power everything inside of it. A bunch of different things that could happen with Apple, but for right now, things to look forward to are first off, the enhancements to CarPlay moving forward with other actual OEMs and other manufacturers like BMW, Mercedes, Ford, Chrysler, things like that. And then after that, then we'll probably be looking at what the car is gonna look like in 2024. But like I said, leave some comments down below. Is an Apple car something that you wanna see on the road? Is an Apple car something that you would drive depending on the price point? How much would you pay for it? What type of expectations do you have from a range standpoint, from a power standpoint, from how big it is standpoint? Is it gonna be a five-seater sedan or is it gonna be a seven-seat like SUV for a bigger family? All things that I'm curious to see as time goes on. But that's gonna do it for this video, everybody. If you did make it to the end, leave a dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you wanna watch some more videos on iOS, macOS, or iPadOS, click on one of these right here because we do have a very cool iPad accessory that I will be showing off very soon. But that's gonna do it for this video. I'm Fernando. And I'm out of here, everybody. Peace.